welcome to my studio. Uh, I spent the weekend away on a painting trip with the East Central Ontario Art Association. It's a group that I belong to and we get together on a regular basis for these painting outings. Uh, I want to talk today about, I'll talk a little bit about my group in particular, but how being a member of one of these groups can be a really important part of a kind of a cohesive plan to continually um, develop your abilities as an artist um, and whether you're just a hobbyist painter who wants to get out with other like-minded people or whether you're serious and like I was had the dream of pursuing a, a successful career as an artist how joining one of these groups can just be a total game changer so stick around and I'll get into more detail about that. So one of the things that can be difficult about being an artist is it's a very solitary lifestyle. Um, you know, people see the end result when you're at a show and there's all kinds of people around, you know, and congratulating you on your work or buying your work and speaking to you. And they think, oh my God, isn't that wonderful? But the, the real fact is that 99% of the time you spend alone in your studio painting. Um, and if you love to create, that can create a very rewarding life and lifestyle. And I love being in my studio painting, um, but it can be lonely at times. So one of the things that I really enjoy to do is to get out with other artists um, where we can paint together. Um, and that turns painting into a social activity. Uh, and I'm actually quite late to the party in terms of uh, being involved in this type of a group. Um, I very early on was, uh, was elected as a member of the Canadian Watercolor Society uh, and came onto the board uh, and used that uh, to great advantage to kind of leech as much information as I could out of those uh, people who were kind of further ahead of me on the career path. And I spent 10 years uh, on the board of the Canadian Watercolor Society. But most of the time we got together for board meetings. We were planning events, uh, planning shows, uh, planning um, symposiums that we were creating. We didn't actually spend a lot of time painting together. Uh, and that has kind of come to me in the last four or five years. I joined a group here in Ontario. It's called the East Central Ontario Art Association. And this is a group of people who, who get together to just paint. Uh, and mostly it's a plein air type society. So most of the time, there's probably a paint outing almost every week, kind of from now, which is, you know, we're towards the end of May up until November. And a lot of these are kind of informal gatherings where someone who either has a cottage or has a place in the country just says, you know, I'm going to be at this location at this time. I'm going to put on, I'll put on lunch for people. Um, and if you want to come paint with me, then get together. Often there's sleepovers as well, but that's up to each individual person. But what I really enjoy doing is we also plan about five or six major outings a year. And these are usually at resorts or conference centers, um, usually in northern or a little bit farther north Ontario, cottage country, um, where we have lots of things around that area to actually go out and paint plein air if you want to, but also studio space for those who want to just stay in a studio and work on their own things. And that's typically what I do. I do the plein air painting in the fall, uh, but I don't like summer in terms of painting it. It's all too green. There's no sky holes uh, through the trees. Uh, and I just really don't enjoy painting summer. And I learned early on, if I'm not passionate about the subject matter, I'm not going to be passionate about painting it and no one else is going to feel passionate about the work. So I tend not to do plein air in the summer, but I do go away and work on my studio work. And this weekend, um, that we just had. We were up at Chippewa Resort, so that's near Barry's Bay, about three and a half hours north of Toronto. 
Um, we had 20 painters there. Uh, I was very excited about this trip as well because Brooke came along with me. Uh, so those of you who follow my mentorship program, you know that Brooke is a young artist. She's 23 years old. She's been out of university now for a year. Although she didn't study art in university, she studied landscape architecture. And I've been mentoring along, her along this process as she pursues her uh, career as a fine artist. And this was her first trip coming away. And so it was really interesting for me. I was very kind of excited and interested to see how that dynamic would play out. Because in, in the group that I'm a member of, I'm one of the younger people there. I mean, our, our group is kind of, you know, from a, a few people in the, the late 40s, and then it's mostly from people in their mid 50s, 60s, 70s, even we have one member who's 93 years old. Um, and so I was very interested to see how that dynamic would play out with Brooke, who's 23 years old. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that first. Um, and that worked out amazingly well. Um, and, and it goes to something that, that, you know, I think about is that there's nothing that is kind of as rewarding to spend time with people who share your passion. Uh, and if your passion is painting, then spending a whole weekend with a group of people who are all passionate about painting, all of a sudden nothing else matters. It doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what gender you are, and it doesn't even matter what level you paint at. We have people there in our group who I would class as absolute beginners, and then I am a very successful professional, and we have a number of other uh, professionals at various degrees of their careers. We have some people who are aspiring to make this a full-time um, job. We have people who are doing it part-time, and then we have people who are just beginning. And the beautiful thing about this group anyways, is there's no kind of pecking order in terms of where you are in your career or where you are in your ability as an artist. It's all just about basically, are you a nice person? Um, and I find that most artists are. Um, there was a book by Harvey Pennock, who was a famous golf instructor. Uh, I think it was the little red book or little, little black book. And the title of the book was, and if you golf, you're my friend. And I always think about that in terms of art and artists. And it all, you know, pretty much applies as well. It's like, and if you paint, you're my friend. Um, and, and it's just something about people who share that passion. And the benefits of being involved in a group like this. So first of all, for me, what I love about it is it, it it's a weekend of a social activity, which is I don't get very much of uh, just spending my time in my paint in my studio painting. But I also get a lot of work done. Um, because the one thing about this group that I'm a member of is everybody paints their butts off. We basically start painting at nine o'clock in the morning, we break for lunch, and then we paint till six o'clock at night. And then we have dinner, and then usually there's some sort of an art talk, whether it's someone giving a demonstration or whether it's a critique of people's work. Um, and then the party starts, you know, the wine gets opened, the music goes on, and then it's a party until the next day when we get up seven o'clock in the morning, breakfast at eight, start painting again from nine right through till six. Um, so for me, that's one thing I get out of it is that social component. The other thing that I get out of it is, you know, I've talked about how when I was on the Watercolor Society, I used that opportunity to suck as much information uh, out of the people who were further along than I was. And I see being a member of this group as my, one of the ways that I can kind of pay it forward um, and just continue that circle of, passing information on to the next uh, group of artists who are coming up who are trying to to pursue their dreams um, but for the members that are kind of either beginners or aspiring to be pros the rewards of this type of uh, an organization are just like through the moon i really wish i had discovered this back when i was starting out um, because you get someone like me i don't teach workshops anymore i don't have the time to teach workshops and it's not economically feasible. Whatever our workshop group is willing to pay me for a week, uh, that's a fraction of what my time is worth if I spend the time here in the studio. So there's no way you could take a workshop with me. But if you remember this group, you can come out and paint shoulder to shoulder with me for an entire weekend. And all we do is talk about art. That's the other beautiful thing about this group. Um, I think most of us in our regular life with our friends and families, I mean, you've got about a one to three minute window where you can talk about art. People ask you, how's it going? And anything beyond that, their eyes start to glaze over and you just realize you've lost them. 
Um, but to be in a situation where you're with a group of 20, 30, sometimes we have 100 people away at our big annual event and all of them passionate about art, and you get to talk about art for the entire weekend. And if you're starting out, even if you think, well, I don't have much to say, you get to just sit and listen. Um, and you listen to other artists who are professional artists talk, whether they're talking about you know, the creation of their work, whether they're talking about dealing with galleries or publishing or using different mediums or even something as simple as because this group is a plein air group, there are people there who are like masters at plein air painting, but also masters at what is the absolute best equipment to pack as light as you can, to go and paint, to have in the pochet box, to put the, the wet plant panels in. Um, and it's being a member of a group like this is just an, an unbelievable opportunity to learn while you're actually painting and while you're having a good time and while you're making friends with other artists so that it's not just that relationship of being there on the weekend. It's, it's having somebody that if you have a question, you know, if someone from the group has a question for me and they email me, I'm quite happy to answer it and probably going to go into a lot more detail and spend more time than if someone just randomly out of the blue emails me and asks me a question about something. And the other thing about, about this, again, I could just go on and on and on, but it's like when we're in our own little little cocoon or even if we have a group of friends who are artists we tend to limit our dreams uh, to the level of the group uh, and if you're in a group you know if you live in a small town and there's four or five artists and you all get together and paint but everybody's struggling um, there can be a real tendency to say oh well you can't you can't be successful as an artist. You can't make a living as an artist or as teaching workshops or whatever because everybody in your circle that you're aware of has kind of faced those limitations. But when you get together with larger groups of artists and you get together with artists who have, who have um, achieved far beyond what your initial dreams were, all of a sudden you realize that anything is possible and you raise that bar in terms of what you're willing to dream for and to strive for. Um, and again, just that ability to associate with other artists um, is you, you can't invent it all on your own. You can't think of everything on your own, but what you can learn just by being around other artists um, is far beyond what you can do on your own. Um, And so I want to talk, get back a little bit to, to Brooke. So first of all, you know, everybody was incredibly welcoming to her. A number of people already knew who she was because they watched the videos in the mentorship series. Um, and I could gradually see over the course of the weekend that she was having more and more fun um, as well as learning. And we actually ended up painting side by side. So like we spent the three and a half hour car ride up talking about art and about her career. We sat beside each other for the entire weekend painting. Um, but for me, the, the best moment of the, uh, the weekend for me, because I was concerned, it was, is Brooke going to have a good time here away with all of us old fogies? So one of my favorite moments was on the Saturday night, um, the music had started and we were all up dancing, all of us old folks. Um, and then at one point, Brooke got up on the dance floor and she was leading everyone in this line dance of some funky song, I can't remember the name of it, but where you stomp to the left, stomp to the right, turn around, whatever. And Brooke had a grin on her face from ear to ear. And there was this group of ladies from 55 up to 93 following along with her on the dance floor. Um, and I could just tell that there was really nowhere else on, work, on earth that she would rather be at that moment. Um, and so that, that just, for me, just really illustrated that whole idea that there's no, there's no age difference. There's no nothing kind of really um, to separate people who share that passion. And it's like, and if you paint, you are my friend. Um, so I would encourage any of you out there, if you don't belong to any sort of a group uh, that gets together and paint, to actually search out what's in your area. If there isn't anything in your area, you might even want to form your own. Um, and while getting together with other artists, I know a lot of um, towns and even Oshawa, I was president of the Oshawa Art Association, we had our, you know, this group, we got together for meetings and we would have hire someone to come do a demo, but we didn't really get together and paint. And I think that getting together with other artists and painting um, is a really, really important thing. Um, it also helps fill the creative well. 
Um, when you paint, you draw on that creativity and at the end of the day, you're exhausted and it's empty. Um, but just being around other artists can help fill that well while you're painting. So for any of you who live in the greater Toronto area or Southern Ontario, um, or Eastern Ontario, and if you're interested in this group, it's the East Central Ontario Art Association. It's www.ecoaa.com. Um, the membership per year is, I don't know if it's 30 or $35. It's not very much. Um, and as I say, there's a paint out almost every weekend on kind of a small scale. And then we have these big, large ones that occur on a regular basis. Oh, the other beauty of these things is, you know, most of the time life gets in the way of our painting. When we're away on these weekends. Your meals are provided for, your accommodations are provided for. The only thing you have to do all day is get up and paint. Uh, and I know for a lot of us that doesn't happen very often. Um, and for the ECOAA as well, I've actually committed that I'm going on, I'm going to be coming on the board this uh, November as vice president. Um, with a promise to the current president, Lucy Manley, that I will take over for her as president uh, a year from now. So a year from November, I'll be taking over as president of the ECOAA. So again, thank you for your time. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do. You can share it with your friends. I welcome your comments and questions. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.